You should have missed, like... We are recording. Let's go. All right, welcome to the first ever McMaster meetup. Uh, hopefully we will have one regularly once a month. Um, a few people are interested, in particular the Drizil team on metaprogramming is really interested in learning how myself and a few of you have been using org mode to do metaprogramming. So, so that's, that's going to be great. Um, we are waiting on our very first presenter, Curtis, to get you started with SpaceMax. Uh, but anyhow, uh, my name is Musa al Hasi, and, and again, welcome. The plan for today is just to have a, we're going to sell you Emacs, that's essentially the plan. So um, Curtis will be talking about SpaceMax and how it looks so cool and looks like Sublime and Visual Code and Atom and it's a full featured IDE, right? Uh, uh, Mark and I prefer vanilla Emacs. Alexander prefers Space Max. Right? But anyhow, just to show you how that looks like and it has all the code completion, everything you're interested in. Um, afterwards, Mark will show you. Can somebody open the door for Curtis. Uh, he got it. He broke the door. Afterwards, Mark Armstrong will talk to you about YAS snippets and in particular Yankpad, if you're so inclined. And that will show you how to avoid tedious repetition. If you find yourself writing a common text block, like, oh, um, begin remark, then you write your remark, then you say end remark in LaTeX, or you're, you have a particular code fragment, you know, um, public static void, this, that, right, return zero, and you find yourself writing this all the time, right, this particular template, YAS yeah, snippets will fill that in for you automatically. If you're an org mode user and you're accustomed to this automatic block uh, being formed for you, that's what Yastipitz does, but it's uh, much more flexible. And if you're an org mode user, Yankpad allows you to use org mode to make Yastipitz. So it'll be great. And then uh, afterwards, we will conclude with talking more about org mode, which is a tool that people... What am I doing? Never ending. I'm looking somewhere? The drinks. Oh, the drinks. Sorry, drinks. yes. Free Please coffee. help yourself. Uh, life in computing and software is providing us with lots of drinks. Uh, thank you, Noel and friends. And there's also uh, more refreshments in the back. Please, at any point, come and help yourself to refreshments. All right. Uh, popcorn may be coming as well. All right. That's right there. Oh, oh, that is popcorn right there. Sorry. Thank you again. Uh, and then we'll talk about org mode, all right? Uh, a way to generate multiple files from a single file. So you write a single to-do list, as it were. Nothing fancy. You've seen it. The simplest possible markup. Many of you have used it implicitly when you're. Can somebody type in? Yeah, just, tell just, tell like, us your password. Just right? know my password. <laughs> just know my password. Yeah. Anyhow, so uh, we'll talk about org mode and how you can write a single ASCII file and generate multiple formats. You can write um, 3D looking reveal slides if you've ever looked at JS Reveal. Uh, you can make nice Beamer slides. You can make LaTeX and PDF and HTML. You can get it to work with your email. You can get it to work with your day planner. So we'll talk about that in depth. And, we'll show, and everything's going to be live coded. So we're not going to show you static stuff and make, you know, uh, esoteric claims. Uh, this is just about selling you Emacs. In our next meetup, we will actually do more things. And hopefully people will have Emacs installed. Feel free to ask any one of us and we'll help you get installed. So let's, let's begin by looking at Space Max. With, with Curtis Dells. <laughs> just, just talk about Space Max. Because you think it's cool and sell it to everybody. Well, I'll show you Space Max. So Space Max is what you want. I'm not going to stand up. I'm yeah, that's fine. This screen is the most important thing. Right? Uh, people on Reddit are going to look at you. On Reddit? Yes. People apparently are interested in this. People in the GTA have asked for our notes. Right. Welcome. Come on in. There's Max. Everyone feel free to help yourself. Can, can you get this? Is this music? Yeah, what yeah, subreddit yeah. are we on? Though? We are on the Emacs. Not... We're on the Emacs. Oh, that's a shady <laughs> subreddit. <though. laughs> All right. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. I, I have stuff. I have people's marks and stuff open here. So. Don't worry. The internet is just judging you. The internet is judging me. Yeah. The internet is always judging you. But now they get to see your face. I think Emily put your face on. Okay. So um, Space Max, so basically if you're interested in uh, using Emacs, um, you, have, you have two routes, okay? You can either download Emacs and you get like, you get nothing, like Emacs is nothing. 
when you initially get it. Don't be so negative. Uh, Don't be so negative. The Emacs Reddit is listening. Well, but see, if you're if you're a minimalist, then that's what you want, right? And you would add to it and be very careful about what you add to it as you go, um, and keep things very minimalistic. Um, but if you're like me, if you're if you're a person of access, um, excess, I, know, I guess I'm also a person of access. Um, I like people that have access to me. Uh, <laughs> So um, then, then you might want a more like overblown, like fully driven IDE experience. Um, I think Space Max is, is a good way to start. It, it, it basically, it gives you all these like predefined layers, um, which is basically just, it gives you all of this predefined like setup functionality for you, for you. And if there's anything you don't like about the functionality, you can just basically comment it out and um, fall back on the default way of adding stuff in Emacs. So um, everybody that, that uses Emacs, generally um, the first thing you do is you set up your .emacs directory. Um, so, so when you install Emacs, you get some directory. Look like. You get some directory .emacs.d, right? And everything that is Emacs is going to be is going to be stored inside there inside inside your home directory. Okay, so um, it's actually been a while since I've used not space max. Um, you you have an init.el inside this directory. Is it in the directory? It is in the directory. Yeah, inside this directory. And gen the general mode of Emacs development is you add stuff as you need them in that init.el. Um, it uses its own language um, e list. Okay, um, to add stuff. Now with SpaceMax, what, what you do is um, to install SpaceMax, if we actually go to install SpaceMax, literally all you're doing is just grabbing a pre-made .emacs.d, okay? And it's, and it's one that's actually kept under Git version control, right? So if you want to install SpaceMax, first you just install Emacs, however you're going to. If you're on OS 10, you just do a brew install Emacs. Hopefully you're using brew if you're on OS 10, otherwise, you're using a shitty operating system. Because um, OS 10 sucks without Brew. Um, it's not even OS 10 anymore, it's Mac OS. You can use Aquamax for Emacs. Yeah, you can also use Aquamax. I do not recommend anybody use Aquamax. <laughs> I'm just letting you know, classic Emacs, you get it, and then you can put Space Max on top. Yeah. Aquamax is very finicky. Um, oh, it, might give you a, it might be a bit of a hurdle to get started with Aquamax. Uh, no, it's specifically not a hurdle, but it, you won't learn as much if you start out using Aquamax. But if you just want to get started, it's a way to get started. And, and we're always happy to help. Yeah. And future meetups will be you know, us talking and sharing ideas and stuff, so we need help installation. And disagreeing, yes, we will always disagree. I, like, I think SpaceMax has balls, but it's great for people just starting. I, I'm a vanilla user myself. Go ahead. So um, if you're... Like if you want to follow this along, like if you want to set up Emacs right now, it's pretty easy. Just install Emacs. The first time you open up Emacs, it, it'll generate this .emacs.d directory in your home directory. Um, to get Space Max, all you're literally going to do is you're going to git clone um, the .emacs.d from the Space Max um, GitHub, right? And um, so, so you're just going to git clone from here, and I'll tell you how to do it right here, and you'll get this .emacs.d, and then when you open up Emacs, it'll automatically, automatically make this .spacemax directory. So the main difference between spacemax and just standard Emacs is, like I said, with emacs.d, um, with, with standard Emacs, you're going to be editing stuff from your init.el file inside, inside here. With SpaceMax, you're going to be editing stuff from outside of the .emacs.d directory with this .spacemax file. Okay, and I can open up. Let's just open up. Can you show us what's cool about SpaceMax? Sell us SpaceMax if you want. Well, the first time you open up, oh, and I broke something last time. I was working on. I did not prepare for this. As you can tell. And I actually broke something about in my SpaceMax configuration, but it shouldn't harm anything. For the purposes of this, of uh, just showing stuff off. Um, so, the cool thing about uh, about Space Max is I can open up my Space Max file, which I have too much stuff in, 
and you get these layers, okay? And um, for the most part, can I make it bigger? Yes, I can. For the most part, you're good at just adding a layer. Um, just being like, I want to program in Haskell. Um, you just add Haskell here. Like, uh, what's a what's a language that some people like programming in? I almost guarantee you there's a layer. Prolog. Prolog. I guarantee you there's a prolog layer. Um, so I can, so I'll put prolog in my dot space nice configuration layers here, and I'll reload the buffer, um, and it'll tell me that it failed to install prolog for some reason. Maybe there isn't a prolog layer. You found the one thing that there uh, isn't a layer Agda, for. Agda, Agda. Agda. I think I already have it installed. Maybe I don't actually. And just pre, yeah, okay. So now it did, it did make the Agda layer. Um, and it comes, it, it comes with all these pre-built functionality and actually I can ask it about it. So if I do a, uh, well, no, that's not it. No, that isn't it. Can you, can you sell it? Space Max? No, I'm not doing a very good job of selling it. Um, there is a way to get the layer documentation by default, but you can just look at, look them up, um, Space Max layers. You're going to have to learn a lot of key bindings. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm embarrassing myself because I actually forgot the key binding to get the documentation. But this, these are all the documentations here uh, for the different layers. You can also make key bindings very easily. If you don't remember the default ones, you can change them to whatever you want. Yeah, you can. Um, so the Agda layer, I can look it up, and it, it'll already have all this pre-built functionality for you. For you. And um, it should describe to you how to, oh, there's not much configuration that, that appears to go on in the Agda layer. Most layers have a lot more description about the configuration. But they give you all these uh, default key bindings, and most of them are bound to some sort of major mode. Um, so in Emacs, there's this idea of major and minor modes. So um, it's kind of like, it, how many, are there any Vim users in here? Ooh, so many. Yeah, so Vim has like uh, file modes, I believe. So it's like based on like the file type, it has like a different mode that it'll use. So um, Emacs, it, it, the, the Emacs major mode is kind of like the same thing, except you can map it to different files, I guess. I guess you probably do the same thing for Vim. For non-Vim for um, non users. So it's basically yeah. the same thing. A major mode is essentially just what kind of file do you have and how should you edit that file? So some of you might be working, oh, I'm in a, I have a C file and I have a C sharp file. I open my C file in Eclipse and I open my C sharp file in Visual Studio. And each piece of software knows how to treat that file and give me editor support for it. In Emacs, because it's such a powerful editor, you have one editor and whatever file you open gets the support it needs and that's called the major mode. But you can also have a bunch of minor modes, like spell checking should work all across the board, and that's considered a minor mode. So, um, yeah, so I was about to explain major and minor modes, but I guess Musa did that. <laughs> so there are these major and minor modes like that. So um, there, you can only have one major mode at a time, but you can have multiple minor modes um, added like that. Now, generally, like what a configuration layer does for you um, is it'll give you a major mode, but then also like a variety of minor modes that work well with that major mode, and it's all like wrapped together. You can build your own configuration layers. I have honestly not found a good reason to build any of my own configuration layers yet. Um, basically, all of the configuration layers I want are, are, are already there, and um, from there, I could be like, so gener generally there is more configuration, so Ego is kind of a bad example. It didn't have, doesn't seem to have too much in the way of configuration that it lays out. But if you look up, um, the Haskell mode has a bit more. It'll list a bunch of variables that you can change, and you can change those variables directly when you make the layer, all right? You could add variables here, and you can say stuff like, well, what do I want to use for my completion backend? 
Okay, and you can look up different completion backends to use. So I was fiddling around, it probably won't work right now, I was fiddling around with different um, ways to get completion in Haskell. And um, some of you guys may have noticed, uh, are you guys using VS Code? Yeah. Yeah, so VS Code, um, we're, we're in like a little meeting to talk about how great Emacs is. VS Code has done some stuff recently to set itself apart from um, the rest of the editors. And, and the main thing is it has, it's been taking advantage of this um, LSP protocol, it's a language server protocol. Um, and I think this is actually probably the future of IDEs, it seems to be. Um, and Emacs is getting some support at, for it right now. Um, it should, uh, VS Code has the advantage because the, it's a Microsoft invented protocol, and of course, um, VS Code was like first adapted before people really caught on to like how great a thing it is. Um, but Emacs will probably catch up pretty soon. It was a little bit buggy, but I can kind of show you. Um, I don't know what I can open. I didn't prepare for this. Uh, probably open some random Haskell file and go directly into my marks. So I'll have something like, um, there's a reason I wanted to open it, because there's a good one. Uh, oh, 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 what can't I open now? Probably can't open this. The IBM will find out, right? And they won't be very happy, but. Do you want to wrap it up so you can No, I do not. I do not want to. I have more time, Busa. Yeah, well, we don't have time. Okay. So the advantage of SpaceMax, because I won't show you any Haskell functionality, the advantage of SpaceMax is you just like add like a layer, okay, and then you're like, oh, I'm good to go. If you want to um, back up on that, like, like if, if you don't like the, the layer functionality, then there's a spot user config, and literally the same stuff you would do um, in terms of uh, just adding stuff to your knit.el file, you just put in your user config. So if you if you want to switch from Emacs to SpaceMax, you can start off by just dumping your knit.el file into the user config and then gradually migrating stuff over to layers as you see fit. And that's about it. Is that, is that you want me to stop there? Okay, I'll stop there then. So long story short. SpaceMax is a great way to just get started and get your feet wet, and then there's no pressure to migrate to any other flavor. You know, space, Emacs is your own thing, and you make it however you want. Um, so it, it, I, I didn't mention you get Vim key bindings if you want. So right now yeah. I'm so using. So for half of you, this is great. You yeah, if you're Vim using Vim and you want to move over, um, SpaceMax when you first start it up, it'll ask you what key bindings you want to use. If you want to be in Vim mode or Emacs mode, if you just choose, I chose Emacs mode, um, but if you just choose Vim mode, or it's evil mode, they call it, um, because Vim is evil for some reason. Well, e for Emacs and Vim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you choose the Vim mode, it's, it's just like working in Vim, and then you can choose, because Vim is multimodal, they add like an extra mode onto it that is just the Emacs mode, so you also can just switch to the Emacs mode, and it'll be just like working in Emacs. So there's almost no reason to use to not use evil mode, um, besides the fact that I just don't use it for some reason. There's also a bunch of other modes as well, and you can always just make your own, right? So some, so you can rebind the major keys, and uh, instead of using control, some people prefer to use a different one. Alexander, do you want to mention something about the Emacs key? Well, oh, um, so the original keyboard uh, that Paul and developed in Microsoft. Sorry. Um, I had the control key next to the space key. So control and alt are basically switched compared to the standard party keyboard we have today. So he didn't have as much of an Emacs pinky problem as people today would now. If, if you're uncomfortable with where control and shift are, you can change them to however you want. Right? Emacs is tremendously extensible and you can make it your you own. Switch it editor. to the caps. But like, Some people say, switch it to caps. Uh, yeah. Well, when right. you say you can switch it to whatever you want, you like, actually can. You can, but like, who's gonna switch it to the shift key? Like, no. Who's gonna switch it to the cat oh. tab key? Also, no. Like, like no, you can't. Really, just, you just make your really key something else. When you really actually think about it, there's no sparable keys. The only one is caps. Like, the only sparable key is caps. Well, well there's the different control if you like. 
Yeah. And there's also left shift you can switch alt and control if you like. Ah, oh, that's so weird. And they, some people think e escape. Some people prefer escape as well. well it's different. You switch yeah. back and forth. Yeah. Anyhow, let's talk about how you can avoid repetition. You know, you have a lot of templates, or you're just writing a lot of text to people, and your text always begins with "Dear, whatever, best regards." You know, you just want to. You have a lot of tedious stuff. Programming, literate programming, just normal boring text, and you repeat yourself often. Yeah, snippets. That's the yeah. way to go. So. Markers. This is specifically about YAS snippets, but it's more, I'm trying to be general as much as I can, it's more just about the idea of snippets in Emacs, or any editor probably. Uh, so YAS snippet itself is available, in, I think, in VS Code and Vim. I, I, know. Know. I could be wrong with Vim. Is it available in Vim? I don't know. So. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So I use YAS snippets, org mode. This file is written in org mode, which we're going to see in a minute and Yankpad, which lets you organize your snippets in an org file, which I like. Uh, there are other alternatives to YAS snippets, including Skeleton, Org Tempo, and the very basic, I believe, the Breed mode, which is quite older. Uh, so a lot of what I'm talking about would apply to these as well. So find the one that you like. Uh, YAS snippets works well for me. So the problem, as we're saying, is regardless of what you're doing, but especially in computing and software, you probably find yourself typing the same thing over and over. Uh, for instance, document headers, wrappers and LaTeX, uh, branching structures and programming languages. Uh, if it's just a small chunk of text, it's not a big deal, but it does, the time you're wasting typing that over and over, it adds up uh, very quickly. For larger tasks, probably what you do is you go and copy from somewhere what you want to type, and paste it over, and then make modifications as you need, which is fine, but it breaks your workflow. You have to open a separate file, possibly in a separate editor or something, uh, copy it, paste it in, go and make the changes that you want. You're wasting a lot of time on that process. So a better solution, uh, it, it's, copying and pasting really isn't wrong, it's just too many steps. So the idea of a snippet, uh, is it's a chunk of text that can be inserted with a simple command or expanded from a keyboard. So we'll look at YAS snippets. So for instance, here is an example of a snippet file. Uh, this snippet is for a LaTeX slash item. It's something that you're going to write over and over. This is for just items. Yep. Just for the slash item. It's the simplest like? example I could come up with. <laughs> Nobody uh, wants to write slash so, ITEM. Yeah, these, th this is five characters. Instead, I can write two and tell it to expand to those five characters plus a space. <laughs> you use the yeah, snippet very differently. <laughs> I don't actually use it for this. Okay. But this is the simplest possible example I could come up with. It, it, it's just a piece of text that I'm dumping in. So that's cool. Uh, already, if you are doing a large chunk of text, this is useful to you. But there's a lot more you can do with snippets than just putting in a chunk of text. Uh, I was going to talk, like, what, what time do we have here? Uh, you, you have a better two Okay, I've got some time now. So uh, I'm a tab three stuff, like do the dollar one and two stuff. Yeah, yeah, I've got that. That's coming. Um, before I go on to the more features, I'm just going to talk about a, a bit about how YAS snippets are organized. So YAS snippets as a tool has you write a file that looks like these five lines here, what I highlighted earlier. Uh, you write this into a separate file, which is called a snippet file, uh, and it's got some keywords at the top and then the actual text to enter. When you, call, when you call this snippet. You can give it a key, like uh, you saw that I enter li, and that expands into item. Uh, you can bind it to a key combination, like I hit there, control C, li, and it just brings the snippet right in, so I don't have to type anything to start, I just hit the key combination. Uh, there's different ways you can do that. <laughs> 
I, as I said, I use the Yank pad so that I write all of my snippets in one Word file, which I can maybe show you at the end. But the yeah, snippets, by default, you organize them into a bunch of separate files in a bunch of directories, each directory co corresponding to a mode. So for instance, the snippets you want to use in C, you put them under directory C mode. And then you'll have a bunch of files in there for things that you expand when you're working in C. Or a LaTeX mode for working in LaTeX. Uh, yeah, so the, the one I wrote above, you might put it in tech mode or late tech mode. So Again, you don't have to know all of these things right now. Yeah. We're just trying to sell you Emacs and try it out and bring questions and ask us and email. There's a bunch of settings you can make for a snippet. Just quickly, uh, you can give them a name. Uh, Generally, the only ones you need to worry yeah, about are name and key. key. Key is what I did where I type something and then hit expand. Uh, that's the li that I did. A condition, you can write a piece of Lisp code that tells it to expand the snippet or not based on some setting. Uh, so for instance, you can check the name of the current buffer or what time of the week it is or something, and it will expand or not based on that. So you get a lot of power there. Uh, probably you don't need that. but. If you want it, that's cool. Uh, you can group snippets into menus if you're more into using graphical menus rather than typing things. Uh, you can define some variables that are used inside the snippet, again, using Lisp code. Uh, you can give it a binding. That's where I hit Control C, Li, instead of typing out Li and then expand. Uh, you can. Actually, if you change the type to command, you can actually just execute this, this code on command. Uh, rather than producing text, it will run code for you. <clears throat> so again, a lot of power. Uh, you can give it a unique, unique identifier. Probably don't need to worry about that. And contributor is just there if you take it from somebody. Or if, if you've got a GitHub repo maintained by a lot of people, you might want to mark who contributed that snippet. Uh, OK, that's cool. You might not want to write 500 snippets for everything that you want to do. So one thing I mentioned about, like uh, the the list code, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Like you could put like e list code to do stuff. So I have certain yeah snippets that like um, they use something that I want an import for, and I don't want them. So I want the import to be put with the yeah snippet, right? Like it's probably like a snippet of a function, and I want that import that I need for it. But I don't want some like dangling import in the middle of my code, right? So you can put some ellipse code at the end that actually looks through, finds the input, import, and then put it to the top. So it is like it's quite powerful, like what you yeah. can do and put it in certain in terms of putting in code, like if you're willing to write the ellipse for it, right? Is yeah. this in your init file? Can we all can we all go to your GitHub and find this? No. Uh, <laughs> can I, I, get I, I can send that out. Uh, we, we should send up for, for, for the record, Mark and I have our GitHub, uh, our init files are our GitHub, and we're willing to help anyone set up their own as well. This guy will eventually. I like to covet knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I, this was my last example, but let's jump right to it because Lisp code is cool. Uh, this is a really simple example of executing Lisp code. So yeah, snippet, you can just you can execute a piece of Lisp code and have the result entered when you in, enter the snippet. So here I've got this snippet called this file that if I expand it. Uh, Oh, it expands to the wrong thing. It's supposed to just expand to the name of the buffer, the name of the file that I'm working on. Uh, but I, I messed up somehow. Just the buffer name. So what this be? Uh, buffer name? Or, this, this is from the Yas Snippets tutorial. Okay. So you don't need all that. You can just okay, say yeah. buffer dash name. So all yeah. of that could go away. You can just say buffer name. Okay. So line two two seven. You can control K that. Yeah. Um, th this isn't actually where my things are set up. Oh, I'll oh, okay. go to my yank pad. Uh, the silly one I was going to show is uh, I like the package dad joke in Emacs. Um, I can have a snippet to enter, enter a dad joke into my file. Now, out of interest, who wants to see the snippet that made that happen? Right? <laughs> that, that's literally it right there. It just calls but, dad joke. Yeah. But notice, it, DJ doesn't give you that joke. DJ actually invokes the command dad jokes, gets the joke, prints it in. Yeah, it will be different each time. Can you show us that? Just grabbing them from the web. Can you 
Can we look at that snippet? Yeah, it's, I, I mean, it's essentially right, right there. Uh, and all I've given it is a key. So when I type DJ and then hit expand, which usually expand is tab, uh, it's different for me, but again, you can set these keys as you like. Tab is what you will usually use. Uh, yeah. How do you, you can escape that key? For example, now I want to drive that DJ, and how can I escape that? Escape that. Oh, you just want to write DJ and then and then tab. Uh, control and then G is the standard like yeah. escape. Like yeah. are you saying like if you wanted to stop? If I just want to write if DJ. If you want to write space. the literal DJ. Yeah, DJ is right now. Oh, yeah. then you just DJ and then space. I just don't hit tab after. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, See, I want and actually, I, I have um, <laughs> the expand set to control C E, so it won't ever happen by accident. Uh, actually, it's it's because Yang Pad I can't use tab, but yeah. Question. Yeah. Over the summer, I wrote a LSP server that dynamically generated snippets. Uh, in my case, it was for looking at certain functions that had required arguments and optional arguments. And I generated the snippets dynamically. Is there an API to do that in Lisp, essentially, to generate snippets in Lisp? Probably not, but people are probably working on it. The Emacs community is kind of like scrambling right now to be like, oh shit, there's this LSP thing now yeah, that we yeah, should yeah. start like working with. Like, um, the, we programmed in um, Elm a lot, like, you know, and right now in the newer version of Elm, they decided to like not add yeah, special yeah, support yeah. to it because they're so busy being like, we should just have LSP support, Yeah. right? So um, there probably isn't right now, but there probably will be um, eventually. I mean, I think the LSP is a better approach. <laughs> yeah. Um, like right now, I, I use um, company mode, so so I get like auto completes. Um, I, I like an outrageous amount of auto complete. Like as soon as I type anything, I want an auto complete um, bar to show up, right? And I have the app snippet built into my auto auto complete. So literally, I'll just start writing the, a bit of my snippet. It'll pop up, and when I hit enter, tab, or whatever, to complete the autocomplete, it'll expand the yeah, snippet, which I find to be a bit nicer than like writing the whole um, It depends on how DL. long it depends. It depends on what you like. Some people find that quite obnoxious, right, to have it autocomplete yeah, so all the time. I, I try to keep, and you'll see in my example, I try to keep it three or four letters for a snippet, uh, because it's, you, you want to just type a very small thing and, and expand it. But you have to, if you're using a lot of snippets, you're going to have conflicts between them, possibly if you, uh, well, not so much with yes, but you, you have to remember all of them. Because the mode or company mode will aid you in remembering because you only need to remember. Yeah. Then there, there, there are menus you can use as well. Uh, okay. Uh, I was talking a minute ago about you might not want to write all your snippets. I think it's good to do that because you should identify tasks that you're repeating over and over yourself and automate them yourself, you learn that way. Uh, you can disagree. There is a very large library of snippets uh, on GitHub. If you just Google YAS snippets, you'll find the YAS snippet GitHub and it will link you to this library because YAS snippets doesn't come with any snippets by default. It used to, I think, but they, they uh, took it out, uh, made it a separate thing. Then uh, there's a lot of cool snippets in there. So at the very least, it's worth looking at that library of snippets just to see what you can do with this for the different modes that you might be working in. If you're a C programmer, a Haskell programmer, anything like that. If you write a lot of LaTeX, see what they can do. Uh, one other thing is I said that snippets are organized into mode-specific directories, which makes it sound like you need to copy the same snippet several times because you have a C mode and a C++ mode. Those are different modes. They have different directories. A lot of the things you do in those are the same. So you don't want to have to copy your snippet files. There is inheritance in YAS snippets. You can say that a mode inherits from another mode. So for instance, that library, uh, all of C mode, C++ mode, and Java mode inherit from a made up mode called CC mode for C-like languages. Uh, so a bunch of snippets are in there for like while loops, for loops, all those things, because they're, they're identical in those languages. Uh, so, now just some examples. Uh, 
The one snippet I showed you at the beginning was just plain text. Uh, you can do a lot more. So, for instance, often in LaTeX you want to enter something, you want to make an itemized environment. Uh, you could just dump that text in there and then move your cursor to the middle where you're going to put your items. But you, there's this dollar sign zero that indicates where to put the cursor when the snippet is en entered. So if I do that, my cursor ends up where I want it in the middle. Uh, and actually, I think you can even put in a couple tabs so that it will automatically be tabbed in for you. Uh, I just haven't done that just yet. Can you edit multiple things if you go into like a for loop, you'll edit all of the index? Yep, that's the next thing. Uh, there are fields. So dollar sign zero is where you end. And dollar sign one, two, three, four are fields that you jump between. So I've got this general environment. So the first thing I jump to is what sort of environment? Let's say it's an enumerator. You can even mirror fields. So if there are several dollar sign ones there, uh, the first one you type it in, and the second one it just automatically gets filled. <clears throat> and then you just tab to move to the next field, or dollar sign zero if you're done. Uh, you can modify the, some of those mirrors as you go. So, for instance, here I've got a field for this title. The other fields, I can run this code on that title and change it into dashes or anything. I can capitalize it to do anything. Wow. So you can think like you're writing a C header file and you type its name somewhere and then the if and def uh, appears capitalized as you would like, like they, what you typed in. It gets mirrored all over the place. You can modify it as you like. <coughs> Uh, you can have placeholders or suggestions. So does anyone here use Agda? No? Okay, that would, this example would be better. Uh, just, just, so, just, but, uh, just to make the example more accessible to some of you. Yeah. Um, so a Agda works on types, which unfortunately it calls sets. And then sets themselves have to be indexed. There's a hierarchy, Russell's hierarchy of types, if you will. Yeah. And so that's what the stages are. But initially, it's just a type declaration. Yeah. So. It's very often that I want to have something of type level and then something of type set of that level. It's very common in Agda. Usually I don't really care what the names are, so I just call it lowercase a for the level and then uppercase a for the set. Uh, and so I can suggest that. You see the, the field one dollar sign, curly brace one, colon, and the suggestion is a. Uh, I can override that if I like, and it mirrors properly and everything. So I can go and change those defaults. But if I just quickly tab through, it just gives me the defaults. So for instance, a better example would be a for loop. Very often, your variable name for your for loop is going to be i. And then your final command for the for loop will be i++. So that would be a good default. Uh, you can also use some Lisp code. Uh, it's laid out in the yeah, snippets tutorial to offer a list of suggestions that I think you can then arrow through. Uh, so you can have I++, I minus minus, you can have I, J, K as suggestions. And we already saw that you can run code inside these snippets. And that's basically what I have. There's a lot of power there. I don't use all of it. Uh, but you can automate a lot of things with snippets. And it's fairly easy to get started, especially if you use a library that's already built for you. All right, so Yank, Yank yeah, snippets and Yankpad and all these things are great. And then you saw a bit of what uh, SpaceMax has to offer, and it comes with all the goodies baked in, full featured, or if you will, with batteries included. Um, yeah, so just yeah, quickly, you... I've got like my, my Yang pad here that defines all these snippets, uh, like 
inserting double quotes around things, cardinality signs, uh, expanding words for me. And all of this is on your GitHub? Yep. Uh, all these ones that did cool things like that title with the dashes around it. Mm. So let's, so let's go to the last little section of our meetup. It's going to be about org mode and how you can use that to generate multiple formats from a single file. I, I want to give the precursor warning to this, which is I, I love org mode. I use it for a lot of these stuff, but these guys are crazy <laughs> about org. They like overuse the, the shit out of it. I'm trying to write my entire thesis, in, including code, in one org file. Get good, man. How are you doing that? Yeah. Even the, like they're generating their generate like init files from org mode, and, and like he said, you were generating all your gas snippet directories from org mode. Yes. I think the default gas snippet directories is fine. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I don't disagree. I just like to have everything in one file. Okay. So let's let's start off with some of the files you've seen. You we saw a show. So you write a text file, for example, right? No? Maybe maybe this is not the most interesting text file you have. But uh, you decide, hey, this is my text file, and I want to talk about the topics. Space Max is so cool. Yeah, yes, snippets make life better. Uh, this this uh, black right here is just for spell checking, right? Org mode is my life. Your spell checker doesn't recognize McMaster? No, because it's McMaster. Stop judging me. Anyhow, so here's a list. You might have, you might see these normal to-do lists, right? A to-do list. Has anybody never done a to-do list like this in their life with plus symbols everywhere? Can anybody say they've never done that? Too much negation for me to correct that. Yeah. So most of you just write a plus, 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 or whatever notepad on on a, on a physical notepad if you're that old, right? And then you're like, oh, this is my meeting, and this is what we talked about. But I don't want people to see this ASCII text. I want them to have access to a PDF, for example. Notice down here, this is, this is my file is called emacsmeetup.org. Right? So you just say, just, it's a normal file, there's nothing there. This is the whole file. You see it, nothing fancy. Now you say, control C, control E. Right? Let's look at that again. Control C, notice I get this buffer that shows me all possible completions. Right? This is called a Helm buffer. And I, I use vanilla Emacs, so I installed this myself. If you use Space Max, you get this out of the box. You just get this nice completion out of the box, and you don't have to remember anything, because everything is there for you. And I say Control E, and it says, how do you want to export it? Well, I would like it to be exported as a LaTeX buffer, as a PDF. So I say L and O. Down here it says it's processing the LaTeX file. It made Emacs Meetup. Oh, hey, look. Look at that. It made a file for me. Maybe open Emacs. Let's not judge me too much. Let's <laughs> not judge me too much. Just so you know, no. Emacs you is a text editor, it, yeah. but it can open PDF files. It can. I just didn't want to. modes to do graphics. Yeah. Let's, not, let's not overwhelm you too much. But look at that. It made a nice little thing for us. Well, look, there's a problem. There's no title. Let's, let's go back and add a title. Right? There's a bigger problem. Let's not talk about the bigger problems. <laughs> right? The bigger problems are, are, are my Unicode here. So you can hide things by using the hashtag symbol, which means it's a comment and nobody will see it. If you instead use hashtag plus, you write the word title, you can say uh, Emacs meetup, right? Then you go back, control C, con control E, L, O, right? And it's processing the LaTeX file, it's making it for you, it opened it up, look at that. Oh, isn't that interesting? We have our title, and it used the system default username to find out who I am, to find out the date, and it made a table of contents. Wait a minute, we have no sections. Our table of contents is, is very silly. Let's change that a little bit. So we're here. So this is first things first. Notice, I, I write a star here. Star. Star, 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 more stars. Right? And it will make headings for me. First things first, 
right? Another star, second things second, and again we can we can say hello world. Um, I am numbered. So am I. I am not, but I am a sub tree. Me too. And then we can even go deeper if you want. Hello, grandma. Whatever. Right. You can you can go arbitrary, arbitrary nesting, right? Anyhow, so we have all this. Just keep going, right? And then now I am outside the. Enumeration, if you will, or itemization. And again, control C, control E, we can pick what kind of way. Alright, let's let's stop playing with Lady Tech and PDF because that's lame. Let's go to HTML. So I click H and I wanna see it. So oh, so control C, control E, H O, and it opened it up for me. Look at that, it made the title for me just as I wanted. My table of contents, clickable, really nice. My list is right here my hierarchy, and, oh, gotta let me know if it's too small, guys. Right. And look at that down here. Author, it knows who I am. It found it by default, and it tells me what date and what time it was created, and you can even validate the HTML code if you want. So a single file allows me to generate HTML and LaTeX. Right? Ain't that interesting. Now some of you might not be content with that. You might say, hey, I wanna do cool things. So again, uh, you can just tab to open it, Fold things you can tab, right? Uh, you can even do it at the this level, right? Then tab. Oh, they're all gone, right? By default, these arrows are dot dot dot. They're ellipses. You can change them however you want, right? Uh, this is the space max look and feel, but I am not using space max. I just, I just like the look and feel, so I stole it and added in. Uh, let's let and you can move things if you say uh, Alt. You can move things around. Likewise down here. So this is a lot. I don't want to copy this whole thing, kill it, go here, paste it, change that number, change this number, that, that's a lot of work. I don't want to do that. So let's put it back to how it was. Undo, 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 undo. Show the media. I will, I will in a moment. Yeah. So I leave it as it is. I click Alt and I and arrow up. Ooh, they moved. Right. So just Alt and then arrow up and they move around. Right. So you can move things around, you can transpose them really nicely. Right? It's all about being efficient. Now, let's talk about undoing. Right? So a lot of languages, right? a lot of editors, you, you do something, you made a mistake. So you undo it, and that history is gone forever. Your mistake is gone forever. You can never see your mistake. In Emacs, you have undo trees. You're allowed to branch. So meta x undo tr undo dash tree dash Visualize. So this command is called undo tree visualize. I'll just run it. Here's what I've done. So undo tree is like version control, but locally for your text buffer and implicitly. So you're writing every like two, three characters, it saves. Every two, three characters, it saves. Right? So let's look. I'm down here and now I say, hello, Frank. Right? Now I go back to my uh, visual tree. Look, X is down here. That's where I currently am. If I up arrow, ooh, hello Frank is gone. I up arrow, hello Frank is gone. If I go up one more, oh, I made those new spaces, they're gone. If I go up one more, ooh, right, it, it undoes things. Suppose I didn't want to write hello Frank. So I go up, I'm here right now, I click enter, right, and now I say hello J, no, let's be uh, inclusive, hello Jocelyn, right, so now, I can look at my tree again. Look at that. I'm down here. If I go up, I didn't write, I, I'm here, I'm Ja. I didn't commit to Jasim yet. I had James, I changed my mind. I wasn't sure what I'm doing. I go up, I didn't have anything. I go left, right, and there was a different branch. Hello Frank, ooh, look at that. So it keeps all of your changes. Now I'm at Hello Frank, all right? Let me make sure, I, I don't wanna be sexist, so let's go Frank, Frankie, Frankstein. What's that female name? Frankine. Frankine. Francine? Francine. Yeah. Francine. No, who watched Arthur? PBS. What's, what's her name? Francine. It is Francine. Francine? Yeah, it was Francine. Fran, is this how you spell Francine? Yes. Sure. 
Francine, there you go. I committed to Francine, all right? Hello, Francine. And if I go back to my tree, look at that, I'm all the way down here. It looks like I'm linear, but maybe I didn't want to commit to Francine. I made a mistake, let me go back, let me go back, and then go down. Oh wait, I want this branch instead. And it's all locally. So it's essentially a version control right there for you. All right, so if you make a mistake, and one of us did make a mistake in their configurations recently, and one of us doesn't have version control, and, and that one of us um, didn't know about undo tree, and then they're like, oh wait, I can go back up the hierarchy. And so it's very nice to just have this. Just to note, very cute. undo tree is a package that you install. The undo tree always exists. <laughs> Undo's in Emacs form a tree. Yeah, they're, they're all there by default. Yeah. But right? undo the, the visualization is visualization. The default undo is like so weird. It's complicated. It, 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 it's because, complicated. Because you can undo, but then to do a redo, you have to undo the undo. So it's like, it, it's it a complete a mind fuck. Like you, yeah. like you don't want to deal with it. You, yeah. you basically, you undo, and then you do something, which is usually just hit cancel, the control G, and then undo again, that starts doing redos, because it starts from where you are and, and undoes your undoes. Uh, the, the, the visualize yes, helps. for the Python Jupiter. Yeah. 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 Oh, so that's, part of space. That's not how you spell the default. planet Jupiter. Yes, in case. All right, all right. So if any of you have used Jupiter, right, which is really neat, it's really neat, right? You write some code, and then it changes right in front of you, right? Like, if, for, for example, if you're writing a tutorial for someone, you have a bunch of English pros, then you have some code, and then you have more English pros. And while this person is reading your tutorial, they can change the English pros, uh, the code, and it will evaluate there and then. Wouldn't it be nice if you could do that? But you don't want to run a server and worry about that, and you want it to be accessible, and you want to generate a nice PDF and a nice HTML and some Beamer slides, and you want to be able to all do that from one place. So you can do that as well right here. So let's, let's run some Haskell code, because we all love Haskell. Let uh, Fibonacci, yeah. the Fibonacci numbers are one. You can write them really cool this way, I think. Zip with. If anybody knows what the Fibonacci numbers are, and I think here you say tail of fib? Tail fib and then tail tail. Can I? Two arguments. Can I do this? Just, just so that it fits in a real way. Hateful uh, academics right now. Tail of tail of fib. Right. So here's a, here's a crazy Haskell line for some of you. Right. It's really big, so it's. Right. Here's some Haskell. All right. Um, let's let's run that. All right. If you try running it, you get results. Right. For contractive variables out of scope fib. You can't do recursion at the top level. That's no, no, no. You just you have a let expression with no in. That's fine. Don't judge me. All right. So let's let's try a simpler example. Forgive my ignorance. Let cool x equal x times x plus 33, All right. a really cool function. Right. And now let's do cool of 24. Yeah. Control C, Control C, we'll run it for you, okay? So you can, and now if I decide to change my function, now I wanna say, uh, I don't know, minus 123. Then I say, Control C, Control C, the result changed. And I'm only using Haskell because it's easier to set up and I don't wanna be silly in front of you guys. But what most people do is they use it for R, or they use it for Python to get look, nice looking graphs, right? Um, and again, you can export this, Control C, Control E. Let's go back to uh, P PDF, L, P, right? Uh, there is no such thing as a P, is it? There, there is, huh. uh, but I want you to actually see the PDF. Open Emacs uh, PDF. So here's the PDF again. And unlike last time, notice we actually have contents, so that's great. They're all clickable, they're all hyperlinks. It numbered everything for me all by default. I don't need to write any LaTeX, right? Remember, compilation is from high level languages to low level languages. LaTeX is low. Org mode is high level, right? Who needs to write begin item, end item, when you can just write a plus symbol or a minus symbol, right? It doesn't matter, you just be consistent about the top level symbol, and you can change those however you like. Um, let's, let's just jump to our code. Oh, look at that, the code is colored. How convenient. It's colored and everything. Right. So there's a thing called uh, minted, and then you can just hook it up, 
a very simple one-liner if you want, right? And uh, it just comes up really nice, right? Um, we talked about generating things inside your, your org mode files. Let me show you one right here. So here's my .emacs. I have it symlinked, right? Just as uh, uh, Curtis mentioned. And in it, I have an init file, right? Init.el, right? Here's my init file. It's a lot of words. There's no prose. If you want to read this, it's going to be hard to read because there's nothing explaining anything to you, right? Um, but I, I never write this file. This, this is generated, right? So org mode can spit out fi text files for you. It will tangle things for you. So let's go back and do that for hours. So here's our Emacs meetup. This is a Haskell file. So we say control C, control V, control T, right? If we, uh, sorry, colon. Tangle, we want to tangle this file. So now we say control C, control V, control T. Why didn't we tangle it? My cool.hs. Control C, control V, control T. Right. So we said colon tangle, we gave it the name of the file we want it to create, and it says down here tangled one file. Let's go look at that file. My cool.hs. Here's the file. Right. Look at that. It it will it will spit out code for you. So in case you're like, oh, I, I want to write literate code, I want to write a lot of prose everywhere, but the people I work with, they don't want to read all of that. They just want a really quick and dirty one, right? Or maybe you're like, like our friend here, you want to covet knowledge. So you document your code, but you don't want to be replaced at your company. So you strip out all the commentation. Right? That's, that's what you do. Right? Um, you need that commentation. Yeah. All need to comment their stuff. So here's my init file, which Emacs reads, but this is, I, I can't read this. There's not, nothing is explained to me, just a bunch of lisp. Right? Where did it come from? It came from an org file that I keep. So here's my org file, right? And look at it. It says, uh, uh, there you go, right? So I have a nice title. Before I showed you the hashtag title, but you can also do a bunch of things. Author, date, you can describe it, right? Because if you open a PDF, you say, you know, properties, right click properties or an HTML, you look at the source, you can see some metadata. Who is the email? Uh, what's the email of the person? What date was it? What's the description? What categories are there? So you can add a lot of metadata if you want, right? Um, and then you can manipulate it however you want. You don't have to. No one says you need to. Um, uh, you know, there's keywords like to do, right? To, to remind you, I have to do this thing. Uh, I have started this thing. Um, I am waiting on someone. You can make your own to-do words, right? Uh, this thing is a task I have to do. If I say shift down, it says what priority do I want it? Priority B for me means middle priority. C means optional for me. And A means this is really important, I need to do it. You can of course change all of this to get cool funky icons. Um, as Curtis mentioned earlier, you can also get control X D. Look at that, you can get a nice little buffer, uh, a, a file manager. Right? Be a neo tree if you want. Right? We'll open things for you, look at them with fancy icons. Right? Uh, anyhow, so you're here. Uh, you've decided that you want to work with org mode and you want to generate cool stuff. Right? Life within org mode. Um, and you realize, hey, I want to use org mode as a day planner. There's a very nice blog article by John Wrigley about how to use org mode as a day planner with agenda, very accessible, very delightful. And you realize, what are my workflow states? Maybe you use Emacs to charge your clients, because you're an independent developer. And you realize, I, I start a task, I do stuff, and uh, you, you, know, you want to make a state diagram to remind you of how to do it. Here's my state diagram, and notice the result was generated. Right? So, and it's kept right here. So, uh, I have a to-do task, it started, I might have to wait on somebody, but long story short is, this file, uh, this image was generated from the same org file. Right? My, I, I actually have a blog that I, that I generate from this org file as well. Right? So org mode is tremendously powerful. You can do a lot of amazing things with it. Right? I, you know, it can really simplify your life. You know, if you're interested in clocking your activities, you're like, oh, I, I'm starting this task. You know, uh, I can go to the very beginning and just press I. Right? And down here, it's, uh, I'm inlining my images and everything, but I can clock in. When did I start working on this task? I want to keep myself a reminder of when I started. When I'm done, I can clock out, for example. And then I can see how much time has actually elapsed. I can put an effort marker to tell myself, I think it will take me an hour to work on this. 
Maybe it will take me more, right? So you can do all of these tasks. You can do way more, so much more with org mode. And we've only really gotten to the uh, uh, basics of it. Um, I'm creating a lot. I'm, I'm creating that image again. It's taking a while. Forgive me. Right. Control G. Uh, I, I've stopped. Uh, let's go back to our meetup file. Let's minimize it just a little bit. So we're, we're right here. Let's clock in. So I said I to clock in. The clock has started, right? This is the, when the clock has started, and you know now I will do some work, and I'll talk to you for a little bit, and then later I'll go back and I'll clock out. I'll put an O. So maybe you want to keep track of how long things you're working on or whatever, right? So I'll, I'll press O now, and I put this on for my machine, right? When I clock out, it will say, what did you do, right? And I just, just to remind myself, I talked to these awesome peoples, right? Control CC, and look, my comment is there, right? My, my clock says I worked for a minute, I'm not a very hard worker, right? I went, I got lunch, I came back in, I pressed I. My clock started again, right? I talked to you, whatever, right? I come back, oh, right? Uh, oh, right? And my clock is, well, I, I've set it so that uh, if a clock is zero, it just disappears. But uh, this is the, one of the ideas you can do, and you can keep track of your efforts. There's a lot of things you can do in org mode. Uh, we hope you've, you know, you'll, you'll at least give Emacs a try, perhaps via Space Max, or and, you know, you'll try to reduce the tedious repetition in your life using uh, Yak snippets, or if you're an org mode user, Yak pad. You will consider organizing your life using <laughs> org mode, and hopefully we'll have monthly discussions on Emacs and everyone who has ideas, if they want to talk or just, you know, please chip in. And uh, thank you very much for showing up. So, so the plan is... We can just chat. Yeah, now we, now we can just chat. And the plan is you'll, you'll all bring your machines hopefully next month and we'll just chat, right? What did you do? If somebody wants to present something cool, so me and my friends, that's what we what we've been doing before we had this meetup. We would just meet up once a week and be like, I learned this cool thing in org mode. And that guy would be like, Space Max is the way to go. And we'd be like, You're wrong, Space Max is evil. And, and you know. So we just chat and tell each other what we learned. And, and we thought we'd open the forum to everybody else. And uh, thankfully the department has funded us with food and, and which none of us have really made made use of. But yeah, the, the rest of the time we just chat and talk and if anyone needs help or anything. Again, thank you for showing up and Hopefully we'll have another one uh, next month. Uh, for those of you interested in programming languages, next Friday we will be having our very first programming languages meetup, um, which will be about learning programming languages. Some of them may be esoteric, like Smalltalk or Prolog. Some of them might be interesting, like OCaml or C Sharp. Uh, we will start with OCaml, we will hold OCaml next Friday at this time, hopefully in this room. Uh, feel free to show up and just be like, I want to learn a bit of this, or maybe I don't. Um, two weeks from now, we will be having our compositional, compositionality meetup, our very first one, um, and it will be about how we compose things in life, a la category theory. You don't need to know any category theory. We're going to be using the book Seven Sketches to Compositionality, which is online, it's free, it's, it's color-coded, it looks like a high school textbook, it's beautiful, super accessible, so we're starting on chapter one. Feel free to come, that's two weeks from now on Friday. Three weeks from now, we're going to have our Go meetup. Go is this cool oriental game of strategy, right? So, uh, very, we're very, we're trying, I'm trying to have a lot of meetups here. So anyway, it says feel free to dedicated to never writing an actual thesis. <laughs> <laughs> Please, nobody tell anybody. I do work, I actually do work just one hour a week is reasonable for me to do stuff, stuff and hopefully you will join me in my endeavors. Anyhow, thank you very much. Please.